What about Lamar Jackson? What's the latest you're hearing from there? The Ravens got a press conference with John Harbaugh and Eric Acosta, I want to say in an hour, mm-hmm. hour or two here. Uh, so I would anticipate that you're going to hear some type of messaging at minimum, not, hey, we agreed to a contract, but at least a plan uh, as they move forward here. Uh, my NFL Network colleagues, Ian Rapport, Mike Carapolo, have been reporting that they believe that it's going to be a commitment to Lamar for next season, a commitment to continuing to run that style of offense with Craig Roman. Uh, but we'll see exactly how they decide to shape that. It's, you know, the situation with Lamar is complicated because there's plenty of intellectual reasons that you can argue he should get every bit of the contract that Sean Watson got and more in terms of the value of the deal and the guarantees in the deal. But this is, as all contracts are, about leverage. Kirk Cousins had the leverage to get a fully guaranteed contract because he played out two franchise tags and was on the verge of and went into unfettered free agency. Deshaun Watson, from a football perspective, you know, not to discount the serious allegations of sexual misconduct, but from a football perspective, had a lot of leverage because he had multiple bidders, and the Texans said, go ahead and negotiate contracts. The Browns got him after he had told them that they were out by saying, we'll give you an unprecedented contract that's going to tick off basically every other team in the league. For Lamar to get to that leverage point, he would probably need to play out two franchise tags here. And we'll speculate, I'm sure, about is he actually going to show up if he gets tagged. Lamar played for like $3 million last season, and he played for about 20 or so, 24, I think, this season. The franchise tag is going to be closer to 40. Is he really not going to play for that? And I don't know. You know, he doesn't have an agent. He, his mother is his advisor. There are just different dynamics, um, you know, at play with this situation. But if he wants a fully guaranteed contract, the type the Ravens have not been willing to do to this point, he might have to continue going year to year. And at that point, Lamar, as much as the Ravens, just have to hope it doesn't end the way the last two seasons did, which is him missing a chunk of games down the stretch and not being there when his team is eliminated because he got banged up during the season. Tom, last question. Is this the direction the NFL is going with these fully guaranteed contracts? I mean, if I'm an owner, I'm shaking my head thinking, you've got to be kidding me. Well, owner, agents and players would love if it went that direction. But, you know, fully guaranteed contracts are never – a bargaining issue. They're an individual contract precedent issue. No one was really able to build off of the Kirk Cousins contract. Nobody so far has been able to build off the Deshaun Watson contract. We've seen several other quarterback deals get done here. Again, it comes down to leverage. Uh, Players would love it if they start getting fully guaranteed contracts, but there's a variety of reasons that owners don't want to do that, not the least of which is the funding rule, which, to give you the short version of it, if you give somebody like Deshaun Watson $230 million dollars fully guaranteed and you pay him $46 million in the first year, well, then the other, whatever that is, $184 million, you have to put into escrow by the end of this month. And it just sits there like a rock. Rich people don't like not making money off their money. And so unless that rule were to change, there's going to be always going to be that barrier to fully guaranteed contracts. But also it comes down to everyone's going to paint from the team side, Lamar, or excuse me, Deshaun's contract, as an outlier, and that is absolutely going to be tested, not just by Lamar, but as the Bengals try to get a deal done with Joe Burrow and the uh, Chargers try to get one done with Justin Herbert and the Eagles uh, with Jalen Hurts and potentially the Dolphins with Tua Tungavailoa, every agent involved there is going to push for that type of a deal. Do they get it? Again, a lot of this comes back to leverage and whether or not teams are willing to do something that they know they're going to catch a lot of flack from other owners about, even though technically the owners are not allowed to talk to each other about what their contract offers are, because that, of course, Susie, would be collusion. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.